Hey everybody, I'm Jeff Bull, Manager of Developer Advocacy. And I'm Corey Gwynn, Product Architect with Meraki. Awesome. So Corey, you know, being at Cisco Live this year, you know, back in um, Europe after so many years from the pandemic, it's interesting to walk through and see all the different technologies that are out and you get a, a really good sense of what's really important for Cisco and sort of like our industry at large. But what I wanted to talk to you about is, here in the DevNet Zone, you know, we talk about automation, we talk about APIs, all these sort of big acronyms that are important to people, but I, I thought it might be interesting for the Meraki side of the house to really get into like, what specifically is important to Meraki right now when it comes to developer tools and developer interfaces? Because while we talk overall about the, the big things, I don't think we put enough attention on, like specifically what are you focused on and why are you focused on those things right now? Yeah, well just like true to form with Meraki, simplicity is our mission. And I'm not naturally a developer. You know, I was a computer engineer, but it was mostly networking and Microsoft administration. Um, but as I was really, you know, trying to integrate solutions with my larger customers and partners, they would say, that's a pretty dashboard that Meraki has, but I have all of these other tools that I need to use. How do I make my thing talk to your thing, right? And it was through that journey of understanding the potential of APIs but then how poorly APIs are documented out in the world, that I was like, there's something that could be improved here. Mm -hmm. And it was with that that I kind of, I discovered the open API specification or Swagger, and I started championing that Meraki transition our kind of random API in V0 to actually be structured against this framework mm -hmm. to really enable us to, to scale, to enable other um, departments within Meraki to build like, a consistent interface. And from those learnings, we've really been able to share that with the broader Cisco and really the broader ecosystem mm -hmm. that we all make good APIs that can talk well to each other. We understand how they're going to behave. Uh, and it just ultimately improves the developer experience. It's, you know, it's super interesting that the way that you describe it. Um, so often I hear, you, you sort of almost hear two competing things, seemingly competing things. You hear the idea that like, I want APIs, we want it flexible, we want to be able to automate so we can hook into you know, all the, whatever language is used. And on the other side of that, I've heard from customers, when I was in sales, I would hear from customers saying, yeah, that's all great, but why don't you just make that feature available to me in the GUI, or yeah. you know, insert user interface here. And it, in what you just described, there's something really interesting that I wanna, I wanna have you explore for us, is the, and something I've thought about for a while is, you can realistically only put so much into a, a user interface, whether it's a graphical or some other, you could put everything in there, yeah. but we've seen how that turns out with other yeah, products. When, when you put everything in, <laughs> It doesn't really do the thing people think it's going to do. So I'm, and since you said Meraki is all about simplicity, I'm really curious from your perspective and Meraki's perspective, um, beyond just we want to make it easy and for tools to work together, what is the driving force behind that simplicity and the accessibility of the API? Like, what is, what is really, beyond just simplicity, what really does enable your customers and anybody looking at this um, to like enable more with Meraki by having an API than not. Yeah, that's good. So as you're saying, like with a dashboard or any interface, you can only put so, so, so many features in it before they become a disservice, right? You no longer can focus on what you're trying to solve because you're inundated with options and selectors. And next thing you know, you need a certification just to operate the basics. And that's what we were trying to avoid with Meraki. Um, that being said, there are a lot of these scenarios where you need a specific control, a specific option, and we chose to not expose that in the UI, but provide it in the API. Now, if we can really document that well and make it accessible, um, now we've given all of these controls and uh, details to our power users while still exposing the key features and the graphical interface. Okay, that's really perfect. I, I think it'd be interesting to dive into how that practically works. And we were talking pre-show a little bit about some of the things that are really important right now that you're looking to implement or focus on in the Meraki API, because I, I have to imagine that with, mul with multiple endpoints and ways you can interact with it, there's always gotta be something that you're like, this is the thing we're doing right now to improve. And I'd be curious what that is, um, and also why that is what you picked. Yeah, there's actually two pieces. Um, the first part is our classic API. So it's built on open API spec. But we only implemented maybe 60% of the capabilities, the ways you can define what this API can do. And that is a journey, right? So that's constantly working with other teams, making sure that they have properly defined and tested and documented all of their capabilities. And that's one piece. 
Um, but going forward uh, with the new version of OpenAPI called V3, there is some new capabilities. Uh, one of those is called callbacks. And this is a new way where we can officially document our best practices with webhooks. And what that really means is, uh, instead of an API where you're calling our services, we are going to call your service, right? And so it's much more event-driven. So ultimately, this should be more efficient for the monitoring use case, where you're wanting to check the status of a device online, or the VPN health, mm -hmm. or the network usage. Instead of calling our API every couple of minutes to check for any news, instead, set up a webhook, and then we send you that message when you know, it's uh, relevant. Got it. So a lot more about operational efficiencies when you're creating whatever, right. either creating or evolving whatever automation you've already built in place to make it uh, kind of enable that to be easier to work with rather than having to write in every single thing. Like, I've got to check for all these things all the time. You can kind of yeah. let it happen more automatically. That's right. And so that was the technology that we already had, but we weren't sure how to properly document this. And that was like a known problem. We had a couple markdown docs somewhere. Mm -hmm. We had some tribal knowledge over here. And I think OpenAPI realized that. And so they wanted to enable us to properly define this. And so they created this little property and this specification that now gives us a framework that says, OK, this is how we can describe the expectations of this out of band call to your service. But really what this has enabled us to do is say, any of the alerts that happen in the Meraki cloud can now be sent to a myriad of different services. So you could log them all into a database, or you could select a, a certain group of alerts and have them sent to the IT department via a WebEx channel, right? Or send it to PagerDuty for the offline guys, or to um, send it to uh, you know, data aggregation services. And you can start performing analytics and, mm -hmm. and really gaining some business insight around just your, you know, your delivery mechanisms here with webhooks. It's interesting. Um, I mean, one, it's super helpful for any customer that's developing something or already has. But it's, in, in what you said, it, it dawned on me that it, may, it actually kind of automates some of the pain away for the customer in general, because now the customer doesn't have to worry so much about like what things am I going to go grab. They're just going to get told that. So almost exactly. some of the things they would have had to write themselves are just going to be taken care of for them now, and they can fo focus their efforts on other places they really need to spend time with. Exactly that. And there was one other piece that we wanted to solve here. Just because we can send out a webhook doesn't necessarily mean it's instantly going to work for your service. And that's because we're basically making an API call to something. And we need to know what that looks like. And so we've introduced a new feature called Webhook Templates that enable you to really shape the, the payload of that message as well as the security requirements so that now a Meraki alert can be sent directly into any one of these services without a middleware to kind of translate it between the two products. So it's with Webhooks, templates, and a way of documenting it that now we have a full, simple solution that our customers can make these low effort uh, integrations that are really powerful. I, you know, I, I hope that everyone watching, you know, is, doesn't, it, this is not lost on them, how, how impactful this really is going to be and is just in general. Um, it really, sort of everything you've talked about to me just reinforces the idea as API as a product yeah. so that API is not a side feature that maybe we'll get to and we'll have whoever happens to make it at Cisco, Meraki, whatever, but it's actually a product. It's its own thing exactly. that we develop out because automation and infrastructure as code or whatever, whatever thing you're working on it cannot be an afterthought. These things need to be the way that we do our jobs every single day. Um, they can't just be left to the side whenever you have time to get to them. 100%. Yeah, yeah that's very cool. Corey, is there anything you want to leave uh, the audience with before we wrap up? I would just say, um, if you want to learn more about the Meraki API and webhooks, uh, go to meraki.io. That's our developer portal. And you'll see all of the latest information and all of our cool new features and everything that we've done with the API. On that. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, really appreciate it. And thanks to all of you for watching. Check out developer.cisco.com slash Cisco Live for all the information from the event.